few months ago, in one of my videos, I talked about Saul Letta. Saul Letta was a great photographer. And he said once that there are things that are out in the open and there are things that are hidden. The real world has more to do with what is hidden. I believe that maybe he can mean a lot of things with these words, but sometimes when we just walk through the woods and look around us, we can see a lot of things, and this can be nice to photograph. But sometimes there are a lot of things that we just can't see. We can't see them because they are too small, because they are hidden between the bushes, because they are maybe, who knows, under the trees, under the grass. And I think that maybe these words of Sol Letta came into my mind when I think in macro photography. So macro photography shows you most things you really don't see just when you walk around. Macro photography shows you this hidden world you can see just with looking around. And therefore, I think that this is a good chance, maybe, to try to do some macro photography. I used to do macro photography in the late 90s, but it was not easy. For every 50 pictures I took, maybe just one was a good picture. But now with digital photography, it's a lot more easy. But, this is, but there is something I really learned about these years. And that is that there are two key factors in year that you need to take good pictures. And the first one is, of course, the lens. And the second one is, of course, the lightning. So, the light. So, let's see if we can find some nice hidden thing to take a good picture macro photo and I will show you what kind of gear I use of course all this gear is on a budget let's go something I find really interesting are these mushrooms that grows here in these trees. Sometimes you can see a hundred of them just in one tree. For example, in all these fallen trees, you can see they are full of these strange mushrooms. I have never seen them in, in South America, but here in Germany, in every wood I go, I see from these mushrooms. And some of them have really nice colors. So let's see if we can take some amazing macro photos of this. Let's see what we need for this. So, well, of course, the first thing you will need is a camera. Any camera you have. Don't care about the camera. In this case, I will use my Z5. The second thing is, of course, to have a lens. And in this case, the best is to have a macro lens. You can get some really macro lens, one to one ratio, but maybe these are a little bit expensive. In this case, I don't have a macro lens. So I use this regular lens I have from my Nikon D5600. This is the, the 18 to 140 lens. Is a DX lens and I will use it in a FX format so the pictures will not be from 24 megapixels they will be about 12 13 megapixels you can use some extension tubes if you are on a budget and these extension tubes allows you to get closer to the object you take in the picture because they change the geometry of the glasses inside the lenses but if you want to go more into a budget, you can use simply this, this close-up lens. With this close-up lens, in this case, this is a two times close-up lens, I can get, I can go twice closer to the object. This lens has a minimal focal distance of two feet. 
with this close-up lens, I can go to about one feet close to the object. And well, that is the cheapest way to get a macro lens. Other thing I need, of course, will be a flash. In this case, just a simple flash. And I will use the flash in the lowest position. I don't want too much light. I just want to fill with light the image. And of course, maybe I will need to get some light behind the object. And for this, I use this other light. It's a very simple light, but it will help me to get some light from behind of the object. So, let's see if we can take some good pictures of these mushrooms from these trees. The setup I use in the camera is, of course, manual mode. And I set the ISO between 200 or 400. In this case, I will use the ISO to 250. The aperture is about, you can choose it, but if the mushroom is too big, I will use a close aperture so I have a major deep of field. And the shutter speed, 1 over 160, 1 over 200. In this case, 1 over 200. And let's see. It's a really cold day. Today, early in the morning, it starts to snow a little bit. But now, it's better. But it, it's very cold. I think a good idea is to walk a little bit inside the wood. I guess we can find something interesting to take a macro photo too. It's a little bit ironic today because there are two black woodpeckers in these pines behind me. I still remember the day, the rainy day I made the video. I was searching for this woodpecker and I couldn't find it. I could not find it. And now there are two just behind me. And I'm with the macro lens. Oh, with something like a macro lens. Let's keep walking. Look at this, how tiny. Let's see if we can take a nice photo of this. It, it's like a little tree, a mini tree. In this case, the best is to stack the photos. The Nikon Z7 can take a lot of different photos with a different focus 
and stack these photos later in some software. Let's see if we can do this. For this, I will need a tripod. Luckily, I have a tripod with me. Well, let's see what came out. And so, that's all for today. I really hope you liked this video. Have you ever tried macro photography? If not, go out, you can see. It's easy and it's not expensive. Just use the gear you have, buy this filter, or maybe the extension tubes, or if you have the budget, buy you a macro lens. Let me know in the comments if you like this video and if you have already tried macro photography. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, so you will not miss all these videos I will do this year. So, now, go out and take your pictures. I know you can. See you. Bye-bye.